May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Um, and today we enter the week of Thanksgiving, where families across the country will gather to celebrate a day marked out for us to, to give thanks. Many of us have valuable family traditions, and honoring those is an important part of our identity. But we are also challenged by our faith to do more than just honor a tradition. We honor God as well. So today we explore what it means to give thanks. But first let me share with you a few ways that you can have a little bit of fun around the Thanksgiving table when you celebrate this week, alright? So number one, a way to have fun, during the middle of the meal, turn to the person who did the cooking and say, see I told you they wouldn't notice that the turkey was four months past its expiration date. <laughs> you were worried for nothing. Number two, bring a special guest and be sure he or she only talks about the tragic and abusive conditions on turkey farms. Make sure that they have plenty of pictures to share with everyone. And number three, when everyone goes around to say what they are thankful for, prepare an extra long speech to give when it's your turn. You can even fake some tears to make things even more awkward around the table. Or, if you're the type that doesn't really like to talk all that much, you can just say, I'm thankful I didn't get caught and refuse to say anything. <laughs> now, that doesn't have anything to do with anything else that I'm going to say today, but I thought you might enjoy those ways to have some fun around the table. Being grateful doesn't really sound like much fun, though, does it? It reminds me of a parent force-feeding lima beans to their child and telling them to be grateful because it's good for you. Gratitude just isn't a big part of our culture. Instead of gratitude, we often find greed. We want more, we aren't satisfied, we have to work harder and do better so we can have more. But then once a year we come to Thanksgiving and everyone stops to reflect on the good things. What do we have in life that we should be grateful for? And the list is typical for a lot of us. Maybe we would even say it's ordinary. We are grateful for family, for friends, for those we've had around us for another year. I wonder if that's how it's supposed to be. Should our gratitude only be about the good things? Should we only be grateful for positive things and not the negative things we experience? Some people think that God controls literally the entire universe, that every molecule, every atom is in its exact position because God ordained it to be there. God saw the story of the universe from beginning to end, and it is simply being played out in front of us. So when your mother dies, God is part of that. When your kid brother is crippled from a debilitating illness, God makes that happen. And of far less importance, but with just as much of God's input, that parking spot that opens up at the mall on Black Friday is because of God. And these people would say that in all of these things, you should be grateful. They all come from God. Whether they seem terrible to you or not is inconsequential because God's ways are higher than our ways. So some say gratitude is the right response even when bad things are happening because God did that too. Others might see gratitude as reserved for special occasions. Some see the world as wound up and then sprung into action, so gratitude shouldn't be wasted on parking spaces. That's just how the world works. Instead, a person would see the truly extraordinary moments of life as worthy of gratitude, such as a miraculous healing of a loved one, a windfall of money for no good reason, 
or a person who sacrifices their life to save another. That's worthy of our gratitude, they say. And then we come to this passage in 1 Thessalonians. It says, give thanks in all circumstances. Other translations say, give thanks in everything. Now, what in the world does that mean? I wonder if giving thanks in everything might have less to do with whether God causes bad things to happen, less to do with whether God intervenes in your life in a miraculous way, and more to do with seeing blessings from God in the everyday, in ordinary experiences of life. A few years ago, there was a man whose older friend lost his wife to a sudden unexpected illness and then death. He was overwhelmed with grief and wondered how he could ever live without her. One of their old friends phoned him when she first heard the news. She was living in Europe at the time, so she couldn't attend the memorial service. They talked for a while and she voiced her heartfelt condolences before making an unusual request of her friend. She asked him to send her an email each day listing three blessings that he had experienced during the last 24 hours. The broken-hearted friend said it was not something he really wanted to do. It was difficult to think about blessings when he didn't even feel like getting out of bed. Still, he tried. Over the next few days, he began to list things like the morning sunrise, the smell of fresh brewed coffee, and a bowl of homemade soup that was shared <coughs> by a neighbor. <clears throat> a few days later, he noticed the first bloom on the rose bush, and the way the golden light spilled across his wife's photograph in the late afternoon. After weeks of emailing his friend a list of daily blessings, he says he felt his spirit slowly being lifted from the pit of despair. It didn't happen overnight, but one day he realized that he was actually enjoying looking for these simple blessings. Though he still misses his wife terribly, he says the blessing activity was a key to helping him want to live again. I think that's what giving thanks in everything is about. It's gratitude for blessings, big and small. Because whatever comes our way, God is with us. It's not that everything will be perfect and you'll never have any worries. And it's not that there is no hope, so you might as well try something. It's that Good flows from God. And the very pinnacle of that good is Jesus Christ, who died for us. So now, we can be at peace with God as children of God. You know, there is something in the attitude that looks for those blessings that restores us. It makes us better people and opens us up to the ways that God would have for us. I remember doing a personal project a few years back. I called it Something Beautiful Every Day. I wanted to take time to notice beauty around me. So I would use my camera phone to take pictures every day. I forced myself to do it. I had to take one picture every day of something beautiful I had found. First, it was driving across the Walt Whitman Bridge at night, something I had done every single day previously. But that day, I saw beauty in it. Then there were rock formations and sunsets and friends and graffiti in the streets. Beauty was suddenly everywhere, and I couldn't take enough pictures of it. In that project of finding beauty, I was changed. 
I was renewed. And that's something like what gratitude does for us. Now, I'm really not interested in just telling you that you need to be grateful for blessings because it's good for you. I would much rather take some time to actually build each other up by sharing what some of those blessings are, both ordinary blessings and extraordinary ones. So, in a minute, I'm going to have Jay come forward, and he's going to walk around with the microphone and ask some of you to share with us the blessings that you have experienced. But before that, I want to give you some time to reflect on the question, how have you been blessed? So I'll answer first and share some of the blessings that I have experienced. In my home life, I am blessed by a wife who loves me, who tells me that I am her hero when I do some pretty simple tasks around the house. I'm blessed that despite having a 16-month-old in the house, I still get somewhere between four and seven hours of sleep in a night. <laughs> And yes, I'm grateful for my family, my sister and my brothers, my mom and dad who are in good health, and also for having lots of nieces and nephews for David to play with. In the church, I'm grateful for loving relationships, a church that lets me be sick when I'm sick, and instead of dogging me about it, asks, how can I help? I'm grateful for wise leaders in this church, ones who are seeking a new way of doing things so we can be a better church tomorrow. And out in the world, I'm grateful for days when the moon and the sun shine in the sky at the same time. I'm grateful for God's grace in unexpected places. I'm grateful for a lifelong disease that has helped teach me to be satisfied and to help others. But most of all, I am grateful that God loves me. And no matter how stupid or foolish I am, God wants me. 